Good afternoon, members and esteemed guests. I'm Mark Fletcher, and I'll be your host for today's special web presentation from iCERT. At this point, I'd like to turn the program over to the iCERT Board of Directors Board Chair, Eric Hagerson. Hello, I'm Eric Hagerson of iCERT, the Industry Council for Emergency Response Technologies. We're a vendor-driven organization that's focused on empowering public safety and its professionals to do the critical work they do. Today, we're pleased to introduce to you our new executive director, George Kellerman. George will talk about a strategic vision for ICERT, as well as take questions from the audience. But before we do that, we've asked Kim Scoble, our former executive director and now director emeritus, to provide a brief overview of the accomplishments of ICERT during his tenure at the helm. We've also asked executive committee members Mary Boyd and David Jones to provide some insights into why George was selected as our new leader. And now, without further ado, I turn it over to Kim. Hi, everybody. Kim Roberts Scoville, former executive director of iCERT. Happy to be here today to kick off this Meet George Kellerman, the new executive director of iCERT program. I want to just offer a few comments and outline some of the accomplishments that we've done at iCERT with your help in the last three years or so when I've been executive director. The first is to say again, thank you. I've enjoyed my tenure as executive director and it's the honor and one of the greatest achievements of my career. I'm looking forward to a smooth and seamless transition with George moving into his executive director role. And I hope as part of that, you will continue and even increase your participation with all the items that iCERT offers in our value proposition, whether it's committees, work groups, and even our newsletters. Please, please, please make sure all your colleagues are getting our newsletters every week. It's easy. There's a link in every newsletter. All you have to do is click it, add the email. It's free. You can have 50, 100 people in a newsletter from your organization. That keeps us, everybody, informed and, and, and in the know. And it's an easy way to do it. So I hope you'll continue that in all of your organizations. One of the most important things we're working on, and you'll hear more about it during the discussion, is the pending NG911 legislation, H.R. 5376 and Senate Bill 2754, the $10 billion in grant allocations for NG911. We're sure looking forward to this. I just wanted to add, even though we don't get a chance to talk about it as often as we'd like because we're moving so fast, Don and the policy committee working behind the scenes to make this happen, that I wanted you to know that ICERT has been and continues to be a material part of this legislative process, and this legislation wouldn't be anywhere near as far along as it is or as complete as it is if it hadn't been for ICERT. And I wanted to thank everybody involved, and we're all looking forward to a piece of legislation passing very, very soon. Speaking of accomplishments, one of the things I'm proudest of is our member growth and diversity. We've grown our membership both numerically and in the type of members, uh, along with the diversity and changes in the public safety landscape with technology. And I'm very proud of that. When you look around and you see Microsoft and Amazon and all the new smaller members uh, and some of the medium sized members, it's great to see new companies with new services uh, in our membership. And we'll talk about getting new members in just a moment. I'm proud of the Public Safety Communications Interoperability Working Group. Uh, think about everything that Ray and Al have done, working with uh, DHS and Texas A&M on their NG911 interoperability project, working with Nina with the NIOC, and working with the ICE Steering Committee. Remember, as part of your ICERT membership, you get access to these groups and committees. We often have voting seats, and you don't get that as an ordinary company, but you do get it as part of the value proposition of your ICERT membership. Something to think about. Our data integration initiative, we're close to the first work product from that group coming to a conclusion, and part of that will be recommendations for the next set of initiatives for the folks involved with the data integration initiative. We're all looking forward to that, and I hope when you see that, that you'll consider participating if you haven't in the past, or certainly re-up and working with the group. Uh, data integration and interoperability are the hot topics in our industry, and, and ICERT needs to be a leader so that things happen in those space in a way that's uh, affordable and accomplishable by the folks in the technology community, because frankly, we're the ones that do a lot of the work. Our policy and innovation and technology committees, Don and the policy committee have done an incredible job for years and continue to do that, already talked about legislation. Uh, innovation and technology, remember the cloud working group, all the white papers we did, those things are still cited today uh, frequently by members of the industry for their value and in helping to clarify 
technology questions in the public safety space. Our marketing committee has been very active. Uh, they're responsible for many things, including our new logo, which you see behind me, which recently has been service marked along with our, uh, our catchphrase, uh, empower public safety together. That was also service marked recently. And we're proud of those and, and, and thank the marketing committee for the process that we went through to get those. And of course, our new website. If you don't go by the website often, you really should. We work hard to keep the news updated. If you're looking for information uh, and there's something we don't have, let us know. But the new website's very functional, and we hope it'll be a big part of ICERT members' participation and, of course, our value proposition going forward. Uh, I'm a little biased. I think our semi-annual member meetings, we only used to do one meeting a year. Now we do two. And uh, even though, unfortunately, they've been virtual in the recent past, when protocols allow us to get back in person, I guarantee it'll be a great meeting, as they always have been. And uh, I put our in-person member meetings up against anybody else's, uh, our speakers, our participation by members in panels and discussions, our committee and work group reports, uh, even our networking is unique. And I, and I think those are important parts of the ICERT program and ICERT particip participation. And I'm glad we're able to do them. And I hope you'll be a part of them, enthusiastic part of them going forward. Quick reminder, December 7th, 8th and 9th. Don't forget, that's our next virtual meeting. Uh, make sure to watch for information to sign up for that. And last but not least, the Dell Tech RFP program. Unique. There are 98,000 trade associations in the United States. Only one, ICERT, has the Dell Tech RFP program. 100 to 150 fresh RFP, RFI leads delivered to your mailbox five days a week. I'm sorry, no extra charge. That's an amazing value and uh, unique to ICERT, and I'm, I'm very proud of it as an accomplishment. If I have one request, if I'm permitted, uh, please, I'm asking every member to invite one non-member that you work with, a supplier, a friend, a colleague, to join ICERT or certainly consider it. You don't have to do the heavy lifting. We'll do all the work. A lot of information is already on the website. There's a link up in the slide. Uh, and if you'll send their name and contact information along, we'll do the rest. Your testimonial is the, the greatest sales force we have. Your use and enjoyment of ICERT as an organization to help your business model uh, is the, the best testimonial and the best salesmanship we can have. So please ask one non-member that you know or work with to join ICERT. If we can grow the organization that way, uh, think of all the things we can accomplish, particularly with new companies and new contacts and, and uh, uh, the leverage that'll give us for to, to do new and great things in the future. All right, uh, my time is up. Just a reminder, if you ever have any questions, I'm still around as Executive Director Emeritus, and I'm happy to be contacted at executive director at theindustrycouncil.org, and I'm available as a resource anytime you need me. Thanks, folks. Now on with the program. Now, many of you are no doubt curious, not only about George, but also the executive director selection process. Next, let's hear from ICERT board members Mary Boyd and David Jones about their insights and reasons for supporting George Kellerman as ICERT's next executive director. So the ICERT and the um, executive committee, once we learned uh, that Kim Scoville was going to leave us, uh, we went to work developing a process for recruiting our, our new executive director. And it's it was actually a very solid process. Uh, we, we initially had very strong uh, requirements in terms of what we were looking for in a new executive director that included public safety. We felt that that was very important uh, given the, the unique nature of, of ICERT and who we serve. However, um, personally, what, what I learned and was overwhelmed by um, it through the process was one, the number of applications that we received, the amount of people that were interested in joining our organization was impressive, but also their resumes. And they came to us from various backgrounds, definitely had a blend of public safety uh, background, but also uh, potential uh, applicants that were in all kinds of other industries. Um, through the process, in addition to public safety experience, we were also looking for an individual that understood, one, it was a small operation. Could they function with a very small staff? Uh, two, what were their ideas to grow the organization? Um, 
focusing on on revenue. You know, we all are revenue driven in our day to day obligations and our paying jobs. Um, we were looking at creativity and growing uh, growing our revenue and ICERT. And the other item that was so important was also understanding that we needed a strategic plan. Um, so we set forth this process. The executive committee divided up uh, the the applicants that we wanted to talk to. Um, so we would interview maybe one or two executive committee members would interview an interested person, and then we would all come back together and discuss whether we wanted to go to the next phase. So we actually, it took us a while to get through it, but it was a very solid process. When I was on the first um, initial review of George, um, and a couple of things, you know, definitely caught my attention. One, his background, a uh, strong background in policy. Um, he had a strong background in working uh, in D.C., which we need certainly right, you know, right now uh, with the funding opportunities. Understanding how Congress works is very, very valuable asset. The other thing that uh, got my attention with George was, one, he was accustomed to a small staff, but he also brought to us um his his prior employer which was really a manufacturing retail uh trade association in texas and a very old one like 90 something years old and it was struggling so george went in small group turned it around uh one thing that stood out to me in interviewing with him was the story when there was a bill uh, filed in Texas that actually put his membership at odds with one another. And he was able to maneuver uh, the conflict, uh, building consensus within that organization. And I'm sure he's very proud to say today, I won't speak for him, that he was able to join ICERT and, and leave that organization in really good hands as that had completely turned around, uh, both in involvement of its member companies and revenue. So um, to me, it was a natural that uh, George would rise to the top. Uh, also, my philosophy was there's not a one of us that went to school uh, to college to learn public safety. We all have learned it through the School of Hard Knocks. Um, and certainly there's enough of us within ICER that we will, you know, continue to support him as he learns the various technologies. But, you know, at the end of the day, I believe he will be able to maneuver through all the, you know, variations of technologies and the focus that our member companies have and 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 bring positive results both in cooperation within our member companies, but also in growing revenue. So I just want to say to another Texan, welcome, George. I'm delighted that you were able to to join ICER and I want to thank you uh, for actually submitting your resume. So as the executive committee determined the best strategy uh, to move forward in, or as the search committee, I should say, uh, determined the best strategy, we focused on two things. Number one, uh, the the direction from the full board was that uh, we needed to have the individual that uh, would focus on being able to grow the organization, uh, that we had accomplished uh, significant items uh, in the past several years, uh, but to advance the organization that we we truly had to to grow the organization uh, so there was that point to consider the next point we the the search committee focused on was uh, finding the right individual that had a public safety or emergency services background um, and Ultimately, as we began the process uh, and began seeing the letters of interest and, and resumes and the like, we, we realized uh, pretty quickly that uh, to truly gain that individual that, that we're looking for, uh, that we needed to focus on those that have a demonstrated uh, background in growing associations, in managing and growing associations. Um, you know, it, it really drove us to look 
at uh, you know what in that background of of the of the individual that we were seeking uh, enabled them to be successful in growing the organization and growing the influence they have both at the federal and state policy making level, but also uh, you know in growing the organization in terms of membership and services being provided to membership. You know, at, at ICERT, we have uh, we have a whole host of subject matter experts in public safety and emergency services, in the products and services that we provide to public safety. But we don't have a whole lot of folks that are subject matter experts in association management and growth. So accordingly, uh, we uh, that became the focus on ensuring that um, uh, you know that we find the right individual that has uh, demonstrable success in growing an organization that that understands um, you know the role, the proper role at the federal and state policy making uh, level, but. Uh, has demonstrated that they can manage and grow uh, 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 associations such uh, such as ICERT. Um, so accordingly, we went through this process, um, and uh, we ended up with George Kelleher. And it, uh, uh, you know, what um, draw us or what attracted us to uh, to George uh, revolved around not only did he grow uh, the current organization which he uh, which he was uh, was leading at the time, a state level uh, organization, a trade association, uh, proved you know where he can grow that organization with a relatively small staff, which is very similar to. to I served. But he also had a background in previous associations uh, where he led the federal and state uh, uh, policy making and in legislative affairs organizations, and we're talking about very large uh, organizations such as AARP and the Airports Council, uh, both of which are known uh, for their government affairs and legislative affairs programs. So the background that George brought to that, along with his uh, demonstrated success in growing uh, an organization um, led us to ultimately make the decision to to hire George, and we're glad that he is accepting this, uh, accepting uh, the position, and we look forward uh, to future growth, both in terms of membership, in terms of influence, in terms of membership and services to membership, and the value that that we can create create both for our members as well as our industry. Thank you to all of our speakers today. Your insights into the selection process have been very informative. Before we hear directly from George Kellerman, I'd like to remind all of our participants today that immediately after he's finished speaking, George will be taking questions directly from the audience. Anyone with a question can simply place it directly into the chat tool which I'll then moderate and present to George. So without any further ado, it's my great honor to present to you ICERT's new Executive Director, George Kellerman. And good afternoon, everybody. It is indeed a pleasure to be with all of you today, and it is truly a pleasure and an honor to be the new Executive Director of ICERT. Uh, before we dive into the more substantive part of the conversation, uh, as part of this webinar, I wanted to share with all of you a little bit about myself uh, and hopefully start to build a relationship and a connection with each of you that I know is going to be so important as we move forward uh, with ICERT. Um, you know, I'm a Texan, as Mary mentioned. I grew up in Houston, uh, attended University of Houston, and uh, uh, now reside in Austin, Texas, after having spent uh, over a decade in Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm married and have a family. My wife and I met in high school and we're high school sweethearts. And in fact, we just celebrated our 24th wedding anniversary earlier this week. Um, so we met in high school and managed, <laughs> managed to stay together uh, all these years, which, uh, which is uh, great. And she's been a, a great friend, a great partner, uh, and a great mom to our kids. And on that note, we have two kids, uh, a 19-year-old daughter uh, named Kelsey and a soon-to-be 13-year-old son who turned 13 
in uh, mid-November. Our son is Cooper. Um, you know, in our family, uh, we are passionate about sports and about outdoors and having a good time. And my wife likes to tell people that in our family, we do politics and we do sports. And that's kind of the, the things that drive us uh, in our professional lives and then also in our, our um, you know, at home, uh, off, off the clock kind of lives. <clears throat> in terms of sports, you know, our two kids are incredibly active uh, in their respective sports. Uh, our daughter, Kelsey, is a collegiate golfer. And we're very, very proud of her and her success and, and, and are thrilled at watching her growth uh, in, in a game that none of us are very good at other than her and our family, which so it's amazing to watch um, her growth and her success. And our son, Cooper, is a very, very talented baseball player. He plays select travel baseball. And, um, you know, again, you know, past very minor little league. Uh, I never played a whole lot of baseball and was not and I'm not really a baseball person. Uh, so it's been amazing to watch his development, and his growth as he's been surrounded by um, coaches and others who who are true baseball people who are helping him develop and thrive. So it's that's what we you know fill our days and our weekends with, especially is is following them and and watching them succeed in their respective sports and 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 as well as their you know respective lives. Uh, my wife and I are are both former collegiate athletes, so hopefully I guess the sports theme doesn't doesn't. Uh, it shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, I ran track and cross country at the University of Houston, and uh, I'm a proud Houston Cougar. My wife uh, played collegiate basketball at Texas Tech University, uh, which uh, she's quick to remind anyone who asks. It's where men are men, men are men, and women are national champions. And she was actually um, part of that team that won in 1992. Um, so uh, that those are the themes. Uh, obviously, in politics, uh, we both have worked extensively throughout our careers in and around politics. Um, I got my start uh, working for George W. Bush when he was governor of Texas, right out of school, as a matter of fact, on his reelection campaign uh, to the state house here in Texas. And then that morphed into a full-time job uh, working in, in the gu gubernatorial administration and then ultimately on to the uh, 2000 presidential campaign. Uh, and then also did a, a stint on the 2004 campaign. Um, you know, uh, the, the whole notion of working on a presidential presidential campaign uh, was such a formative um, thing for me. And, and anyone who ever asks, regardless of their age, regardless of party, uh, when they are thinking about or have been approached about joining a presidential campaign, the, f the first two words I tell them is do it. Uh, if, if you have a way to do it, if you can do it and you could be gone from your family and kind of disconnect for your, from your life for six months to a year or two, um, it, it's it's life changing. It's amazing. It's something that you can never replicate. I don't think uh, doing anything else. Uh, and so um, that's something I'm I'm really passionate about and and feel like it was such a, a life changing um, experience for me. Uh, obviously, the obvious part of, you know, the, the relationship you build with someone who ultimately becomes the president of the United States. But more importantly, the relationships you build with all of the colleagues and the people and the mentors that come out of that experience. And, and that's been very, very true for me. And, and so I hold those relationships very, very close. They've been very, very important to me throughout my life and throughout my career and still are. Uh, and so that's the thing I really like to share with anyone who's contemplating uh, doing that is that uh, that's, that's what you get out of it. And, and it's incredibly meaningful. Um, you know, the only other thing for, for my family and I, we love the beach and particularly we love Hawaii. That's where we go and get away and, uh, you know, just unplug. And so it's been a little difficult during the, the pandemic, but we look forward to getting back to Hawaii sometime during 2022. Um, and hopefully some of you out there share the passion for, for Hawaii as well. It's, a, it's an incredible place and a unique place and certainly a, a, a place that we're incredibly fond of um, as, as a family. Um, I'll leave you with one um, sort of side note fun fact uh, about me that I actually haven't even had an opportunity to share with any of my colleagues, uh, either on the, uh, any ICERT governance or, or colleagues within ICERT. And that's that I have a side job. It's a volunteer side job. And uh, I am the uh, game announcer for the St. Dominic Savio Catholic High School Football Eagles. Uh, and I have been for the last six years. Um, St. Dominic Savio Catholic High School is where my daughter went to school and graduated from. And it was during her time in school where I was essentially 
uh, voluntold for the, the game announcer job. And it's been a blast and a lot of fun. And I've been doing it for six years now and including two years uh, after my daughter graduated. So uh, that's what I fill my, my Friday nights with during high school football season. And uh, just kind of a little fun fact for folks to be aware of. And uh, other than that, I look forward to, again, to our conversation uh, coming up here on the webinar and especially the opportunity to meet all of you and get to know all of you in person over the next, you know, however long. My, my hope is that it's, it's, uh, it's for many, many years and develop these uh, meaningful relationships and, and be able to really work together to move the goals of our industry as well as ICERT forward uh, into the future. So, again, it's a pleasure to be with you and I look forward to uh, visiting you, visiting with all of you more in depth here shortly. Thank you. Thanks very much, George. We will definitely have to trade stories on favorite announcer microphones. All right, let's move directly into the Q&A once again. If you have any questions for George Kellerman, simply place them into the chat where I'll moderate those and present them directly to George. So we'll ask everyone just to stand by for one moment as we switch into Q&A mode. Okay, the first question in today is, why did you pick the ICERT organization? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think, uh, as Mary described, my, my path, particularly in my last job at the Texas Retailers Association, uh, I felt like I had done what I needed to do there and accomplished all the goals that they set for me. And, and from a personal and career standpoint, I felt like I could be an executive director or an association leader at the national level. And so that, that's really what I was looking for. What jumped out about ICER was just the, the subject matter area, the, uh, the, the area within public safety. Even though I haven't worked directly in public safety uh, myself throughout my career, I've worked on the fringes. And that's what I expressed to the um, search committee when we had our conversations uh, through my, my role at the airports council, got a lot of interface with the Department of Homeland Security, with, uh, with uh, law enforcement, particularly in the airport world, um, with, uh, and then here, in, actually in my job uh, at the Texas Retailers Association, got a lot of uh, interface with emergency response, both at the state level and the local level, dealing with the various natural disasters that we've had hit us. So it's an area that I've worked on, sort of on the margins, and have really, really been uh, fascinated by and enjoyed, uh, and made some some good relationships, professional relationships in it. And so, yeah, the, it just jumped out at me. And I thought, yeah, I, I, I like this area. I like these these folks, the ones that I know. And so I thought, why not? Or right, here's our next question. So you've worked in smaller organizations that were struggling and built them back up. Now you have an organization that is in good shape. So what are your plans to maintain its current stance and grow it? No, that's a really good question. And actually, it's a testament to, to the leadership that ICERT has had throughout its, since its inception in 2005. Uh, I've, I've been able to, I'm in a very fortunate situation that not only am I able to really gain a lot of knowledge and experience from my immediate predecessor, Kim Scoville, but I've had the chance to already connect with uh, the two prior executive directors of, of ICERT and start to tap their knowledge and because they're so involved in, in the industry and in the organization as well. So ICERT is, is, is in a really unique situation. It's, it's on this upward trajectory. It's on this growth trajectory. So it's not coming from a place of crisis uh, where you're, you're trying to you know, limit the damage and then build it back up. It's, it's on this growth trajectory where you're taking something that's new and trying to continue to build on the legacies that have been established already. And, you know, this is such a, an emerging, the area of public safety, the ecosystem of public safety is continually emerging and evolving. And so that always going to bring new players in and different players in. And so the potential for growth is, is definitely there. And so that's the way I'm looking at it is let's, there's opportunities to grow this. Let's find ways to grow it. And by the same token, increase all of the good work that, that ICERT does on behalf of the industry. Okay, this next question came in on a private DM to me uh, with a double dog dare you to ask it. You've been here a few weeks and have read all the briefing files. What are you still doing here? <laughs> uh, well, it's, uh, you know, 
it's everything is moving very quickly. It's been a, it's been a uh, a very very busy three weeks, but that's what I like. That's that's the kind of environment that I thrive in, and so. Uh, the good thing is, why am I still here? I think it comes down to the relationships I've been able to start to build and forge over these first three weeks, and and probably a little bit before that during the, during my transition. So, uh, and they've all been good. I think uh, I think if they were really bad, maybe I wouldn't still be here. But the the uh, the bottom line is they've all been good. They've all been welcoming, and 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 you know I think there's quite a few people on this call already who we've had the opportunity to roll up our sleeves and get a lot of work done and, and be very collaborative over these first three weeks. And that's been uh, really rewarding and enjoyable. And that, again, that's an environment that I thrive in. So I hope that answered that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you at least I want a coffee. Here's the next question. What do you think your biggest challenge is taking on both a new organization and a new industry? Well, for me personally, it's just the learning curve, but it's it's uh, it's something that I'm I'm used to, and I've been in in the past when I uh, took on the my role at the airports council as a, as their head lobbyist, representing every airport in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, I I'd worked in aviation policy zero none. Uh, my my uh, frame of reference for aviation was as a consumer, as a fly as a member of the flying public, and so. Um, I approach this the same way. It's an issue area that's fascinating, that's interesting. And so um, what I've been trying to do is dive in and learn and absorb as much as I can, but also know what I don't know and trust and lean on the folks and the experts that we have. And that's one of the really interesting and, and, and great things about ICERT. It is full of people who have are steeped in this issue area, who have d great depth of knowledge and experience and background and who I you know, have started to lean on and will continue to, to increase my knowledge, but also to do the things we need to do to uh, uh, achieve success. Well, thanks very much for your time here today. And thank you to all who attended uh, this session. We had a really great crowd. I want to remind you that a video playback of this will be available on the iCERT YouTube channel. And uh, watch the iCERT website, theindustrycouncil.org, for more information on that. I'm Mark Fletcher. I'm Vice President of Public Safety at 911 Inform. Thanks for watching and thank you for the opportunity to host this webinar. Take care.